This video was sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Nitsa Hone, and it's Wednesday, so that means it's time for another deck history video. In this series, I look at the history of deck archetypes that have been successful at Magic's highest level of competition, starting from the first time that particular deck emerged and ending with the modern day. As usual, I ran a poll that let my viewers decide the topic of this week's video. I gave three different tribal options, and in the end, Elves won by a pretty significant margin. Elf decks have found success at one point or another in Standard, Extended, Modern, and Legacy, and in this video, we'll take a look at the origins of elf decks and how they changed over time and why. Obviously enough, elf decks are constructed with the idea of taking advantage of as many elf payoffs and synergies as possible. Today, elves are the representative race for green, meaning that they are a sentient race that appears on most planes and that they embody what green is all about. However, it hasn't always been that way. It took an elf deck 14 years of magic history to top eight a premiere event. Let's start by talking about those 14 years, what I'm calling Elf deck prehistory. Elves did receive a decent amount of tribal support before 2007, which would be the first elf deck to top eight a premiere event, but notably they were not a tribe given tribal support from the very beginning in 1993, the same way that zombies, goblins, and merfolk were. Instead, it took all the way until 1997 for the first elf tribal payoff card to be printed, and it was Tempest's Eladomri, Lord of Leaves, who gave all elves Forest Walk and Shroud. From then on, elves began appearing occasional tribal support. 1998's Urza Saga had Priest of Titania, an elf that tapped for one green mana for each elf you had in play. In 2000, Nemesis had Sky Shroud Poacher, which could fetch elf decks from your deck and place them directly on the battlefield. And Invasion gave elves their first true lord in the form of Elvish Champion. But as you can imagine, these few scattered elf payoffs weren't anywhere close to enough to allow an elf deck to form at Magic's highest level of competition. With the release of Onslaught Block, which came out in 2002 and 2003, Elves did finally receive a ton of tribal support. Onslaught Block was entirely focused on tribal strategies, and this really allowed Elves to get a significant upgrade. However, even a whole block of payoffs wasn't enough to generate an Elf tribal deck that put up top eights at Grand Prix and Pro Tours. Instead, it was Goblins that really came to the forefront as a result of this tribal block, Though, as we'll see, some cards from this block would prove important further down the road. So it took all the way until 2007 when another tribal block was released for elves to finally come together as a top tier deck, with standard the first format that was impacted. Lorwyn block had a ton of elves and elf payoffs with the black green color pair really being all about elves. These first elf decks really came to the fore at a great time too. The 2007 World Championships where two standard elf decks finished in the top eight. One of these was piloted by Katsuhiro Mori. This version of Elves was of course black green, allowing it to take as much advantage as possible of the elf payoffs available in the format. It was mostly a fairly straightforward aggro deck loaded up with some elf synergy, though it doesn't quite have the same level of elf synergy you might be accustomed to today. In fact, it played several creatures who weren't elves, like Tarmogoyf and Troll Ascetic, who were just great green creatures at the time. But the deck did have enough elf synergies to be considered an elf deck. This began with something as simple as Guilt Leaf Palace, which gave the deck great mana since it virtually always came into play untapped. Among the other elf payoffs in the deck were Imperious Perfect and Ren's Run Packmaster. Imperious Perfect was an elf lord who could cheaply churn out elf tokens, and Ren's Run Packmaster required you to champion an elf, which meant you had to exile one in play in addition to paying its normal cost to play the Packmaster. The Packmaster was a formidable 4-mana 5-5 five five that could churn out tokens, and one of the upsides of the champion effect is it gave your creatures some resilience against board sweepers, since if the Packmaster died, the creature that was championed would come back into play. This version of Elves also did something a lot of later Elf decks would do. It ran Disruption in the form of Thoughtseize, and it had a win condition that was built around the idea that you could produce a lot of mana in the mid to late game, in this case, Profane Command, which often served as a finisher. Following the 2007 World Championships, Elves went on to become a fixture in Standard all the way through 2009, and over time, the deck became more focused on Elves. For example, Taishi Fujimoto piloted a black-green Elf deck to a top 8 finish in 2008 at Grand Prix Shizuoka. His version of the deck took out most of the non-elf creatures, only leaving Tarmogoyf, and added two new elf payoffs, Ren's Run Vanquisher and Wolf Skull Shaman. The Vanquisher was effectively a 2-mana 3-3 with Death Touch, since revealing an elf was super easy in the deck, 
and Wolf Skull Shaman could create 2-2 wolf tokens if you had another elf on the top of your library at the beginning of your upkeep. Elves didn't undergo any drastic changes for the remainder of their time in Standard, apart from the fact that Wolf Skull Shaman was ultimately replaced with Chameleon Colossus, who counted as an elf thanks to Changeling, while also bringing a large body that came with protection from black, something that was important in a metagame with lots of black decks. By 2010, Lorwyn had rotated out of Standard, and elf decks have never re-emerged in the format in the years since. However, there are still plenty of other formats to talk about where elves have been important. Let's move now to Extended. Extended is a now defunct rotating format that featured cards from the last several years. This gave Extended Elf decks access to all the elves from Onslaught block, as well as those from Lorwyn. Elves found their first success in Extended in 2008 at Pro Tour Berlin, where six of the top eight decks were elf decks. The first Extended Elf decks were way more broken than any of the elf decks of Standard, and it played more like a combo deck than an elf aggro deck. The goal for these decks was to play a bunch of mana-producing elves in Glimpse of Nature. Because elves are so cheap to cast, you could just keep on playing elves and producing mana with them until you drew most of your library. Then the deck would win the game either with Grape Shot, as LSV's version of the deck did, or with Predator Dragon, as the other top eight decks at Pro Tour Berlin did. The two key elves in this deck were Birchlore Rangers and Heritage Druid. Both of these elves allowed you to tap elves to produce mana, and because their abilities don't involve the actual tap symbol, you can tap down elves with them that have summoning sickness. This allowed for a near endless supply of mana if you'd cast Glimpse of Nature, because you would just keep drawing more and more elves. Two other important cards for the deck were Nettle Sentinel, which would untap every time you played a green spell, which meant you could tap it for mana again, and Wirewood Symbiote, which could allow you to both untap elves and return them to your hand, enabling even more shenanigans. After the impressive showing at Pro Tour Berlin in 2008, elf decks built to abuse Glimpse of Nature also found success at Grand Prix Hanover in 2009 and Grand Prix Oakland in 2010. These later decks had the same basic game plan, but there are two important changes to talk about, and those are Wirewood Hivemaster and Mirror Entity. The Hivemaster had been run as early as Pro Tour Berlin in some versions of the deck that won the game with Predator Dragon, and it generated even more elves which could be tapped for mana, and Mirror Entity was the deck's new combo win condition, since if you pumped enough mana into it, you would easily do lethal. Elves continued to find success in Extended all the way through 2010. Extended ended in 2011 and it was replaced by Modern, where Glimpse of Nature was banned preemptively to prevent this elf deck from overpowering the other decks in the format. However, even with that banning, elf decks have found some success in Modern, though it took until 2015. Before we get to that though, let's take a look at Elves and Legacy, a format they still see play in today. So while Glimpse of Nature got banned in Modern, the same was not true in Legacy, and as a result, Legacy Elf decks are quite similar to the extended version. The first Legacy Elf deck to top eight an event was piloted by Lucas Marer at Grand Prix Ghent in 2012. The deck of course ran Glimpse of Nature, as well as the four key creatures that allowed the deck to draw as many cards as it wanted. Birchlore Ranger, Heritage Druid, Nettle Sentinel, and Wirewood Symbiote. It also added Quirion Ranger, an elf with a similar effect to Wirewood Symbiote. The Legacy card pool also gave the deck access to some absurd mana sources, namely Gaia's Cradle and Priest of Titania, both of which paired quite well with your plan of swarming the table with a bunch of elves. The deck also utilized Green Sun Zenith, which helped make the deck even more consistent as it became much easier to find the elves you needed for your combo. Another key difference was how this version of the deck looked to win the game. Instead of using Storm or playing a big hasty dragon that gobbled up all your elves and won the game on the spot, the first Legacy Elf deck looked to win the game in a more elf-centric way. They sought to use all that mana on Azuri, Renegade Leader, to pump the whole team to massive size and win the game on the spot. While the basic game plan of Legacy Elf decks continued to revolve around Glimpse of Nature and making a ton of mana, the deck did undergo some changes in Legacy. The first notable ones can be seen in the deck that Matt Nass top aided Grand Prix Denver with in 2013. The biggest change was a shift away from Izuri as the win condition, with the deck instead utilizing Crater Hoof Behemoth. One of the downsides of Izuri was that unless you had enough mana to make all the elves without summoning sickness in play big enough to kill your opponent, you kind of had to wait until your next turn. That wasn't true with Crater Hoof, who came with haste and trample and boosted his own stats, making it massive on its own and able to attack right away. The deck could put it into play with the insane mana production, or it could also do it with Natural Order, which allowed the deck to give up a small elf to put the behemoth directly onto the battlefield. From here, elf decks and Legacy remained successful and remarkably unchanged for quite a long time, 
But in 2020, Legacy Elves underwent its next significant change, as we can see in Shimada Hiroyuki's deck. The core plan of this deck was the same, of course, and focused on Glimpse of Nature and Mana Elves and drawing lots of cards and making lots of mana, but Allosaurus Shepherd, a card printed in 2020's Jumpstart, was an important new card for the deck. First, it gave you a new one-drop elf, something the deck loved in general, but more importantly, it made it so your green spells couldn't be countered, making interaction when you started to combo off pretty difficult for your opponent, and in addition to that, the Shepherd also provided the deck with a new win condition, since it could turn the whole board into 5-5 five, five dinosaurs. This gave the deck a perfect new card that was one part combo protection and one part win condition, making the deck a little less reliant on the Crater Hoof Behemoth plan. Elf decks continue to be relevant in Legacy right now, and they still closely resemble Shimada Hiroyuki's deck. That leaves us one more format to talk about, Modern. As I mentioned earlier, Modern was created in 2011, and Glimpse of Nature was preemptively banned in the format and remains banned to this day, and this means Elf decks in Modern had to operate with some significant differences from their extended and Legacy counterparts. Michael Malone was the first to pilot an Elf deck to a top 8 finish in Modern, which he did at Grand Prix Charlotte in 2015. At first glance, the deck has a lot of similarities with the ones that run Glimpse of Nature. For example, Heritage Druid and Nettle Sentinel still play important roles, and Azuri Renegade Leader and Mana Elves are featured in the deck. However, instead of being pretty much all in on the combo plan that Glimpse of Nature allows for, Modern Elves was an aggro deck first, but it was one that could also win the game with a bit of a combo kill, using a bunch of mana to pump the whole board with Azuri. The deck utilized both Collected Company and Court of Calling to make it possible to find whatever elves you needed, and it used Nykthos Shrine to Nyx, which served much the same role as Gaia's Cradle did in Legacy Elf decks. Meanwhile, Elvish Archdruid served a similar role to Priest of Titania, allowing you to turn all your elves into a ton of mana, and it didn't hurt that it was an elf lord too. However, a couple of years later, elf decks in Modern did, for a time at least, shift into more of a combo deck. While much of the core of the deck did stay the same, decks like Luis Salvados, which he top aided Grand Prix Madrid with in 2017, found a new way to produce all the mana necessary to go off with Azuri, and that was combining Devoted Druid with Vizier of Remedy. If you got both in play, this meant you could produce infinite mana, and this meant that even if you didn't already have an Azuri in play, you would have the mana to use Court of Calling to search him up and win the game on the spot. However, this version of Elves was relatively short-lived, and by 2018 the deck had moved away from the Devoted Druid Vizier of Remedies combo and was back at the more traditional modern version of Elves. That is, an aggro deck that can go super wide and produce a lot of mana to allow it to win the game. However, the deck did undergo further changes. One of the biggest changes to the 2018 version of Elves was the addition of Shaman of the Pack. This gave the deck some really serious reach since it tended to have so many Elves in play and it took a little bit of the pressure off the need for massive amounts of mana that can win you the game with Izuri. Some other major changes to the deck included the inclusion of Beast Whisperer, which did a pretty good imitation of Glimpse of Nature, and the inclusion of a new Elf Lord in Elvish Clan Caller, which was also capable of searching up copies of itself. Aaron Kasner's deck, which you see here, was the last Elf deck to top 8 a major modern event, and while it is possible for Elves to do more in modern in the future, it does seem that, for now at least, Legacy is the only format where Elves continue to be relevant. Well, that's the history of Elf decks. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it. It makes it more likely other people will enjoy it too. If you want to make sure you catch future videos, including more deck histories, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. If you want to catch up on old deck histories, you should see the playlist on your screen shortly. And if you like listening to me talk about Magic's history, consider subscribing to my other YouTube channel, Need to Hone History, where I talk about real world history. Thanks for watching.